Hello, art friends. I'm Allie. Thanks for joining for today's lesson on Mr. Michelangelo. Here we have a painting. He did not paint this. We have the artist here mentioned, and this says Portrait of Michelangelo, and this is a detail. I did not go and look at this larger picture, but we know when it says detail that that means they're not showing the complete painting. Here we have one of his most famous sculptures, and it's called the Pieta, and it's of Mary after Christ has been crucified and she's holding him. Here's a picture that I have in one of my art books, and this is showing what it would look like as it is now sitting in um, the cathedral. It's in Old St. Peter's Cathedral. This actually has been damaged more than once. People have thrown things at it, but from the bottom to the top, it's five feet. So it really has a massive scale. I've been able to see this in person actually. So think about five foot, eight inches. That's, I mean, more of like how tall, so well, it's taller than how I am, but to see this seated. And this is out of marble and look how he's gotten the folds in there. And I mean, it's just beautiful. So Mr. Michelangelo never really considered himself a painter. He loved sculpture. He was born in Italy in 1475. His nurse, or kind of like his nanny, was the wife of a stone cutter and sculptor. And so this was his first love. He was probably around his nanny's husband a lot and got to see him working in stone and doing different sculptures. And so this is what he loved to do. Mr. Michelangelo was obsessed with the human form and the figure. And so, I mean, look at the detail that he's able to cap capture. I mean, like the muscles and bones out of stone. So here's a picture of the Sistine Chapel. In 1508, Pope Julius II asked Michelangelo to paint the ceiling of this chapel. It's in Rome, Italy. This was not necessarily what he wanted to do. And the ceiling of this is 70 feet. Here's the floor, here's the ceiling. So he had to get scaffolding. So the scaffolding would be taking metal or wood and then putting boards and creating this huge ladder. And then he would get up there and paint. There's more than 300 figures overhead, well, all around the room. And he did it on a wet plaster. In the middle of this, there's a scene called the creation scene. And it's where you see the image of God and some angels reaching down to create Adam. And so that's what we're gonna focus on today. Getting it started is gonna be pretty simple, but my, the challenge is gonna be to take the handprints we're about to do, put them on the bottom of a table, and then you sit down with some watercolors or some oil pastels, and you see what it was like to experience painting with your neck bent up. And to think about, he did this for four years. And even though he did not enjoy doing it, he still did his best work. He took his time, he didn't rush through it, and he produced some incredible paintings. So the next time you get asked to do something that you don't wanna do, at least it's probably not for four years on scaffolding that was over 70 feet tall. So in the picture that I just showed you of the Sistine Chapel in the very center I pointed, and we have God reaching down here to touch Adam. The hands are not quite touching. We have the anticipation of that scene playing out. So today, you're gonna take a piece of cardstock and we're going to trace your hands on there and then tape it up underneath a table and attempt to paint it. You can use watercolor, you could color it in with oil pastels, and then you could take water and wake those oil pastels up and would, they would need to be water soluble oil pastels for them to kind of come to life. But here I have my niece's hands that I traced. So I just took her left hand, laid it down. I first traced it in pencil. So you're gonna get a sheet of cardstock and because you're painting, it needs to be cardstock. You put your hand down and you're gonna trace it or let someone trace it. I traced in pencil, then I put the other hand down and it doesn't have to be at a certain orientation as long as it's not touching, just as his are not touching. And then trace that. Then I went over it with a Sharpie. For her, she wrote her initials A and S on here, and there's a different variety of things you could do. 
For the younger students, I would suggest not putting anything in there and then just working on painting inside the lines. Or you can get even more elaborate and you could write inside here. So I chose the verse from Genesis 1. Then God said, let us make man in our own image according to our own likeness and completed that passage. And so, because that's what verse is being told here in his painting. So there's a variety of things you could do. Maybe you just repeat your name over and over again. You could write your name here. And then maybe on this side, you could write all the different names of God that we see in the Bible. Um, Jehovah Jireh, El Rory. And so there's so many different ways that you could do this. We need to do it quickly here on the table though. So then we can flip it over and tape it to the bottom of a surface so that we can experience what Mr. Michelangelo did. So trace your hands and then you decide on your medium. So this is how I did this. You could go over and paint it. You need to test your pen to make sure that it won't run with the watercolor if you choose to do that. Sometimes it will, or you could do the watercolor on the outside. Again, so many different options to do. I chose watercolor because I thought it could be easy to hold the palettes. If something were to drop because we're sitting in awkward positions, then it's not going to create a big mess since it's watercolor. It's easy to clean up, but that the, there's not gonna be like a cup of paint that spills over. But you use the supplies that you have. So let's pretend this is upside down. I would want to wet my paints to wake them up. I wouldn't have to look up for that, right? And then I get paint on my brush, but not to the point that it's dripping. And then I would start painting. You don't want it to be too wet because you don't want to get paint in your face. I mean, think about Mr. Michelangelo. I'm sure when he would get finished with the day, there could be some paint on his face. and you're perfectly fine just to paint on the surface like this. I definitely probably use more water on here than I would be able to with it up high. So another option is to use oil pastels. So these are the Portfolio Series Water Soluble Oil Pastels. The packaging I believe is a little bit different. I just saw a student that got some and I think the wrapper's black now, but water soluble. You could have this taped up and you could color it in. You could leave it like that. I would suggest doing similar colors together so like orange and yellow. Then when your hand is mostly filled in, you take a paintbrush with just water. This is taped up underneath and then you could go over it and just kind of blend those together. So you see where this is white here. Take the water, it's picking up that oil pastel. So this gives beautiful color on your paper and you would only have water if you were doing this during community day that could spill and oil pastels. So you could even work on like warm and cool colors. So here we have a warm hand, warms are red, orange, and yellow. And at the other end of the spectrum, we've got greens and blues. So you could put that over here. And again, you could have the students write their initial, write the date on here. And I do love that we just kind of capture a moment in time, just like Michelangelo did. But man, as the children are just growing so fast, just to have this moment where their hands are on the paper and just kind of frozen in time and to think about how God created all of us. Thanks for joining today. I hope you enjoyed as we discovered more about Mr. Michelangelo and 
his love of sculpture and not so much his love of painting, but how he worked diligently despite it not being his favorite activity and did an incredible job on the Sistine Chapel and how we get to recreate that in our own way here.